Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew 7. We're going to read verses 24 to 27. So Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, and the, winds, and the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. If you guys remember... Um, I, when I looked this up, it was actually back in 1999. I know I'm getting old when it seems like it just happened, but it was like 20 years ago. Um, but it was those houses in Riverbend in Edmonton that fell into the River Valley. So they were on the, built right on the riverbank, and then they, they all fell down inside there. Uh, riverbank was unstable, and so they tumbled down. And, and I went to university after that happened, and my geology professor talked all about it. And I guess he you know, told people not to build there. At time. I'm not sure if he's just making that up, but that's what he said. And it was interesting because he described how um, soil, uh, I want to keep saying dirt, but he'd get mad at me if I said dirt. It's actually soil. He's very specific about that. Um, if you like just pi or pour a, a, some soil on the ground, it makes a pile. Every soil is going to have like a different angle of the pile. You know, it changes a little bit. And that's the natural uh, friction angle of the soil. And these houses built their house like right on this kind of edge. And the natural angle was actually like that. And he said that all of the river valley is going to eventually go down to that angle. It's natural level. So since they built their houses up there, you know, it would take like some pretty serious foundation to support the riverbank or else it's just going to naturally slide down and all the houses fell in and that's what happened. So it, it was like something where he was really describing that the foundation is the most important thing for keeping these houses up, and these particular ones didn't have that foundation, so they tumbled into the river valley. So that brings us to our scripture reading. Uh, Jesus is talking about the importance of a good foundation. Uh, and this good foundation is there to withstand the loads of life. You know, we have stresses and pressures on us, and we have to be able to withstand that, and Jesus describes the best foundation that we should have to withstand that. This is the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, he talks about uh, people joining the kingdom of heaven. Uh, all through the Sermon on the Mount, he's talking about the blessings of the kingdom, the characteristics of the members and the citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And now in this last section, he's talking about and encouraging people to join the kingdom of heaven, to come in, but he's describing exactly what it's all about. Uh, he ends this sermon with those three metaphors, the narrow and the wide gates. You know, there's only going to be two ways that people get in, or one way that people get into heaven. There's two paths people can follow. One leads to eternal life, and the other one leads to destruction. He also talks about two kinds of fruit, uh, where you can recognize false teachers by their fruit, by their characteristics that they show in their lives. Uh, good trees are going to bear good fruit, and bad trees are going to bear bad fruit. And now he talks about the wise and foolish builder. <clears throat> so he has <clears throat> another metaphor that he's using where he compares a wise and foolish builder, kind of to another pair in this description. And the theme here is that it's not sufficient to hear only, but the word must also be obeyed. So I think sometimes we give the foolish builder a pretty hard time. But how can we commend the foolish builder? You know, what did he do right? Uh, if we look at our passage, we could see that he was not totally neglecting the teachings of Jesus altogether. He heard the sayings of Jesus. Uh, he listened to them. And this is something that's more than a lot of people would do. I know in the experience of my life, when somebody hears that something's coming from the Bible, they automatically shut down. You know, they don't want to hear it because that's just, uh, I don't want to listen to what the Bible says, even if it's a good, wise saying. Uh, you can sometimes, you know, trick them in a sense, is teach them a good principle. And they're like, yeah, that really makes sense. And then you say, oh, it's from the Bible. Oh, no, no, it's terrible. You know, like they just don't want to hear it. Uh, and the wise man actually heard uh, the Bible. He was willing to hear the teaching of Jesus. He listened to this. He also heard with sufficient attention uh, to understand what this message said. He listened to it. Uh, I don't know if you guys have this happen to you, but this happens to me a lot. I'm not sure if it relates to my brain, but I can read something 
and I'll be distracted in my mind, and I have no idea what I just read. Um, we're starting our new Bible reading uh, this week, so there's some in the back table if you guys want to grab a, a, a list of what to read every day to finish the Bible in a year. Um, but I read in the morning, that's my, that's my habit, and so if I'm tired, there's times where I'll be reading, and again, I, I kind of lose track of it, I kind of daydream a little bit, and I'll read a paragraph or two, and I have no idea what I just read. But the wise man here, act, or the foolish man, actually read to the point where he understood, he understood what Jesus was teaching him. Uh, if you go to Ephesians chapter 3, we'll look at verses 4 and 5, and this is a passage that shows that we need to read to understand you know, it's not simply just kind of reading the words and just forgetting them immediately. We have to kind of uh, understand what we're reading, try to, try to comprehend what the, the principles and the message that's in the teaching. So Ephesians chapter 3, we'll look at verses 4 and 5. In reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, and it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. We need to read with enough attention to grasp the concepts. You know, it's uh, something where we really have to meditate on it. We have to understand what we're reading. And the foolish man actually did this. He read Jesus' teachings. He heard it, read it, and understood it. He had enough to comprehend what it's saying. The foolish man was actually influenced by what he heard. So he even took this a little bit further. He selected a site. He started building. You know, he stayed with it until it was finished. His house was complete when he was done. You know, he felt the importance of making provision for the future. You know, he knew he needed a house. He had to protect himself uh, from the inevitable conditions of the approaching season. He recognized that there's importance here. And if we apply this to the real application of the metaphor or what the metaphor was representing, he saw the importance of Christianity. He saw the importance of making provisions for the future. Again, he heard the message, understood it, uh, took it, and actually had action because of this to a certain extent. And if we apply this to what might uh, happen to us in, in, in real life, if we apply it in the real life situation, this might be recognized as someone who reads their Bible. You know, maybe they go to assembly on a regular basis. You know, they're praying on a regular basis. You know, these things are being put into practice to a certain extent. Uh, you know, if we read in the passage, nothing's negative is said about the outward appearance of his house. They just said he built a house. You know, so it's probably a very nice house. It probably looked very good. Uh, and he might be, you know, a good Christian at first glance. You know, when you look at him, he might be someone who you would say, oh, that's a, that's a good Christian, somebody who's doing what Jesus wants. He actually spent time and effort in its construction. You know, he's working at finishing the house, got it all completed, uh, you can also work at being a Christian to a certain extent, you know, go through the motions of certain things. Uh, this is a phrase I believe my dad said in the past, but he said, sitting in a chicken coop doesn't make you a chicken any more than sitting in a pew makes you a Christian. Uh, you just smell bad, you know, because that's one thing. If you just sit and you try to pretend to be a chicken, you're still not a chicken. If you pretend to be a Christian, you're still not a Christian. And in a sense, you smell bad in that respect. You know, going through the motions without the heart involved doesn't make you a true Christian. We touched on this uh, in a previous verse where it talks about people who say, Lord, Lord. Uh, you know, they aren't going to go to heaven. So the, the foolish builder can actually be commended on many things. He heard, he understood, he was interested enough in the uh, spiritual matters to build a house. He was greatly influenced by what, he hear, by what he heard to the point where he worked at it. He did build the house. He did go through this effort. But he did do it all for nothing. Uh, let's go to that passage. Let's go to Matthew 7, and we'll look at verse 21, just a few verses earlier in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7, verse 21. It says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. You know, the foolish builder did many things right, but an important thing was wrong. His foundation was not the correct one, and that cost him the kingdom of heaven. So let's put our focus on the wise builder. What did the wise builder do? He was the one who was commended in this passage. He did the same things as the foolish builder. He heard, he understood, he was interested in these spiritual matters. He was influenced to the point where he built a house. But when his house was tried by the storm, it actually stood. The foolish builder, we saw that it, it fell, it crashed because he didn't have the right foundation. But the wise builder, his house stood. If you go to 2 
Timothy 3 and verse 12. One thing we understand, again, if you've lived a, a, a decent life or really any part of life, you'll understand that times are going to be hard sometimes. You know, there are going to be times where you go through stresses and trials. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12 talks about Christianity in particular. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 12. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. I think in a past lesson I was talking about how some preachers or teachers or, or uh, people discussing the Bible with you will, you know, tend to avoid these kind of verses. You know, these verses that show that, you know, there is going to be hard times coming because uh, they just want to talk about the good stuff all the time. But it is a fact of the Christian life. You know, we will be tested by the storm. Things are going to happen to us that are stressful and we are going to have to uh, hold up against those things. And having that right foundation is critical to understanding how to hold up against those things. If you go to 1 Corinthians 3, we'll look at verses 11 to 13. 1 Corinthians 3, starting in verse 11. This talks about the importance of choosing that right foundation. So 1 Corinthians 3, starting in verse 11. For no one can lay... Any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Again, we will be tested by fire. We're going to have times where things are hard, and we have to be able to stay true to holding to Jesus' teachings. And our ability to stand up against these difficult conditions is going to show us what our foundation is made of. It's going to show us kind of what uh, we're based on, you know, what's going to hold us up during those times. So the wise builder's house was tested, and his house, house withstood the fury of the storm. And it's because he had that strong foundation. Uh, in the construction, again, the foundation is the most important part of the house. It's what holds everything up. Uh, you know, we saw that with the houses that fell into the river valley. They didn't have the appropriate foundation. They just fell down. And even if the house or the structure is still very strong, it's still going to fail. You know, you need that foundation holding it up. And the wise builder had this proper foundation. His foundation was correct, and that's the foundation of Jesus Christ. So we can learn a couple of lessons from this. The first one is really the folly of any other scheme to save your soul. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. You know, a couple of the popular ones is just be a good person. You know, be a good person and believe, and Jesus is going to save you. Uh, pray Jesus into your heart is another one. You know, they, they take certain passages out of Scripture, out of context, and singular, take them so they stand alone, and say that, okay, all you have to do is pray and confess, and you will be saved. If you go to John 14, 16. John 14, verse 16. This is a verse that describes and shows that Jesus is the only way or the only foundation that we should have. So John 14 and verse 16. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's again very clear. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to access that salvation. Uh, if you're trying to get to heaven without Jesus and his teachings, you're essentially wasting your time in that respect. Uh, you know, if you want to navigate to a certain destination, uh, I know now I, I love Google Maps. So that's like the greatest thing in the world now. So even if I'm driving to a place how I know how to get there, I still put it in Google Maps just to see the fastest way to get there. You know, it describes that. And it's one of those things you need to have some sort of map or guidance, especially if you don't know where it is or know where you are going. Uh, I know before Google Maps, you used to have to print those things out. I don't know if you remember MapQuest. You used to put in MapQuest and print it out and take that with you. Or somebody would draw it on like an envelope or something and show you a map on how to get there. But if you're not following the map and trying to find your way, uh, I don't know if you've ever been turned around where you think like north is south or east is west, you know, you're kind of mixed up about where you're going. You can believe with all of your heart you're going the right way. But if you're not following the map, it doesn't really matter how much you believe it, you're still going the wrong way. Like that's just the fact of the matter. That's just the way it is. You have to look at the map. You know, in the same way, if you're trying to just be a good person and you believe in all your heart that you're going to heaven, 
You know, that doesn't mean that it's going to happen. That's just the fact of the matter. The only way to heaven, no one comes to the Father except through me. It has to be through Jesus Christ. That's just the way it is. Uh, many of these teachings are good to do. You know, there's nothing wrong with being a good person. That's what we encourage people to do. But if you don't open your Bible, follow Jesus' teachings, uh, put them into practice in your life with all of your heart, and that's having that strong foundation, you know, you're in for that rude awakening. It's something where you need to follow the map. You need to follow what Jesus says. Jesus is the only way, and he's that map and that way that we navigate our way to heaven. The second lesson that we can learn from the wise builder is the necessity and urgency of hearing and doing. So the necessity and urgency of hearing and doing, putting those things together. Uh, if we go to James chapter 1, we'll look at verse 22. This passage talks a lot about this and expands, but we're just going to read verse 22. So James 1, in verse 22, it says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. It's funny how it, it describes it as deceiving yourself. If you just listen and you don't actually do what it says, you're deceiving yourself. And I think we do that sometimes. You know, we talk about things. We talk about how that's a good idea and this is a good idea. And, and we feel like we're doing something. But if we don't actually do it, we're deceiving ourselves. You know, we, we think we're doing something, but we're actually not. You know, we're just talking about it. And that's that importance of action. Uh, the foolish builder took that first step by listening. He did understand the teachings of Jesus and started putting into practice in his life to a certain extent. But he left out that essential doing part on acting on the message of Jesus with all of his heart, truly uh, building with that strong foundation that he needed to do. He needed both parts to have that strong foundation. Uh, in James, you can see that they, you do need both of those parts. Uh, many recognize the value of the teachings of Jesus, just like the foolish man. You know, again, they say that's right, and that's a wise saying, but they forget about it when it's time to put it into practice. You know, when those storms come, that's when you can really see the character of somebody uh, when those difficult times come about what they do, what's their action as a result of what they're facing. If you have that strong foundation, if you've built before the storm hits, you have enough, uh, you know, uh, awareness that you need to have your house built before the storm hits, and you build it with the right foundation, you can withstand those storms. Uh, you can see truly what your house and what your foundation is made of. So the storms are coming. You know, are, are you prepared for when they hit? Again, the best time to prepare, get ready, is before the storm. You know, it's a lot easier to do it before than it is during. You know, you're trying to cobble this together when you're going through these tough times. And we can le learn four truths from this passage. All people are builders. You know, all people are going to build something. And they're either going to be wise or they're going to be foolish. The wise people are uh, listening and learning and doing what Jesus says with all of their heart, according to what the scriptures say. And the foolish are not doing it the right way. They're not doing what Jesus says with all of their heart. And another truth is that builders have a choice of two foundations. We have the rock, which is Jesus Christ. And then we also have the sand or the weak foundation where your house is going to crash. And that's basically anything else. You know, you have to follow that map to Jesus. You have to have him as your strong foundation. Another truth is all buildings are going to be tested. You know, tests can be, um, you know, minor in certain situations, uh, but tests can also be severe. Uh, back in 1 Corinthians 3, it talked about the fire. It can be something that's a really intense test that we're going through. The tests are impartial. They're going to happen to both houses. You know, the house that's built correctly and the house that's not. Uh, they're both going to withstand those tests. They're both going to withstand those storms, or they're both going to undergo those storms. And the final test is going to be ultimately on Judgment Day. Another truth is only one building is going to stand. It's only going to stand uh, when it has that correct foundation. Uh, it can withstand the suddenness of the storm. We often know that storms or these difficult times hit when we least expect them. Uh, they can surprise us. Uh, storms are going to be uh, quick and sometimes happen when we least expect them. And if our foundation is strong, our building will stand if we prepare before the storm hits. And for the final storm, no one knows, is, knows when Jesus is going to come for that final time. So again, we have to prepare before that time comes. We have to be ready for it. And the building will stand because it's complete. It's complete in the knowledge of Jesus' teachings. 
and complete in the act of carrying out Jesus' teachings with all of your heart, with your faith in him under his authority. Uh, these are ways that we can build our house so that we do have a strong foundation. Uh, I'd like to offer an invitation for people who have not yet based their life or followed the teachings that are in, Jesus, uh, in the Bible about Jesus that Jesus gave us. Uh, we can show you in the scriptures how to do that, how to accept Jesus on as your Lord so you can have that strong foundation so you can withstand those storms when they do hit. And if you are struggling in any way, you know, part of that strong foundation that Jesus teaches is have a strong church that can help people with the things that they go through. Uh, so if you are going through a storm of any kind, again, please make your needs known. We'd love to help in any way that we can.